Hey, what's up guys? It's Nick2. I'm sure many of you guys know there's been a ton of changes recently to the balance of certain weapons. And as a result, I wanted to give you guys a comprehensive updated top 10 best weapons video. So you guys know which the best weapons to look out for are. Truthfully, there is actually a lot of good options nowadays, but I wanted to condense it down just into about 10 guns overall as to not be super overwhelming, but also to not showcase anything that isn't particularly strong. But at the end of the video, there will be an honorable mention section. So feel free to stick around for that if you guys wanna know all of the weapons that I think are worth getting. But honestly, Gearbox has been pretty Pretty active with buffs and nerfs lately so i wouldn't at all be surprised to see this list change in the future so if anything drastic happens i'll make an updated list in the comment section down below so if you're watching this in a few weeks or a month from now be on the lookout for that before i get into the video i want to give a big thanks to hellofresh which is back sponsoring another video if you guys don't know what that is hellofresh is an extremely convenient meal service plan that is going to ship super affordable pre-portioned amazing quality ingredients straight to your door it's going to let you cook a fantastically delicious meal super quickly without the hassle of you know going to the store buying tons of ingredients for just one meal often forgetting something or having to buy like such a large portion of ingredients just for one meal that's honestly what's perfect about hellofresh you just don't have to worry about any of that all you have to do is just take the ingredients out of the box and have a blast cooking these very easy to follow step-by-step -step recipes because the meals are just going to be portioned perfectly for you hellofresh is also the first carbon neutral meal kit company all of their packaging is recyclable and the pre-portioned ingredients means much less waste. The best part though is that with the prices averaging out to less than $10 a meal, HelloFresh is an absolute no-brainer. Personally for me, being able to cook a super tasty meal every single night without having to worry about going to the store, getting all the ingredients, stressing out about meat and vegetables going bad, what I have in my fridge, etc. It's just an absolute godsend and I couldn't recommend it more. As a content creator, it helps me save so much time and it works well with my schedule. So I'd highly recommend you guys try it out. If you want to try HelloFresh, use my link or go to hellofresh.com and use code pognick 2 for up to 16 free meals plus three surprise gifts across six boxes plus free shipping. Thanks again to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. All right, so getting into the weapons themselves, there's actually a lot to talk about here. So my bad for the really long intro, but this is pretty important. If you guys like the video, by the way, please make sure to drop a like. It took a really long time to make this. But anyway, so I wanted to test how good each gun was relative to the other guns, kind of on like a blank slate. I didn't want any gun to seem more powerful than others by making a full setup built around that gun and then trying to compare it. It's pretty much impossible to give an even comparison there. There are certain weapons that are going to shoot a whole bunch of projectiles, right? And those types of weapons are going to benefit more from proc based things such as executioner's blade where like each hit has a chance to proc something so if you have a gun that's going to do multiple hits simultaneously where another gun just shoots one bullet at a second that other gun that does a lot of hits simultaneously is going to benefit more from executioner's blade as a result i'm not going to be using this the same could be said for play the angles and other interactions in the game i'm also not going to be using warcaster here because that would instantly reload and then some guns their main drawback is like the reload speed right so that wouldn't be good for accurately comparing how good each weapon is to each other i'm just going to be using pretty basic stuff just increase your load speed by default a little bit just like a little bit of increased re uh, rate of fire i'm also not using anything that's going to buff a certain weapon type or increase certain elemental damage we have literally just all global damage here and also every weapon that i'm using is going to be volatile and is going to be using the exact same enchant that's why this video took forever certain weapons you can't get enchanted such as the uh, great bow here but pretty much everything in my inventory has the exact same enchant and is going to all be volatile to give everything an even level playing field. The build that I'm using as such is going to be kind of a nerfed version of what it usually is because typically I'm going to have, you know, perfect enchants, etc. Uh, but the main purpose of this is to show the relative power of each weapon. We're going to have gameplay for each weapon on a on a parasite boss kill to show how good it is for bossing as well as um, an obelisk for mobbing. I really wanted to preface that because for me it's really important to compare how good each weapon is relative to each other and if we have completely different setups with, you know, buffing frost damage, etc. We're not going to actually be able to tell how good something is relative to something else certain weapons you could take advantage of certain interactions more so than others and you could build more into with you know getting certain increased damage types such as cryo damage and like a berserker tree or whatever but the idea here is to compare everything um, to each other sorry for the long intro there i just felt it was necessary to explain so first off i want to talk about snipers there's a lot of ones that are actually really good these recently got a huge buff and um, these are honestly incredibly powerful and i really think you guys should look out for them the first one that i want you guys to look out for is the sawmill by the way i'm not going to be showing uh, mobbing for the snipers because the main problem with the snipers is that they are good for bossing not great for mobbing because the ammo is a really big issue so as you can see here i dropped a bunch of th those are the honorable mentions i'm going to show later but as you can see i only have 93 bullets usually you think you have like 140 and this gun just tears through ammo if you try to mob with this you'll just run out of ammo so for that reason, I'm not going to be showing snipers for mobbing because I think they're mainly a bossing weapon, but for mobbing, you'd probably just one-shot most things anyway. So the first one that I want to talk about is the sawmill. You can get this in cryo, which is going to be really good. I believe it comes in all elements. This thing is just an absolute boss melter. It comes in multiple projectile version. This thing is just incredibly strong. Highly recommend it. 
probably the single best sniper in terms of just as much burst damage as humanly possible. Secondary to that is the Skeet Prod. This one used to be volatile and it isn't anymore. I don't really know what happened. Skeet Prod has less ammo issues than the Sawmill and it's still going to do incredibly good damage. It also has the added benefit of having the crossbolt bottom text here. So the more shots that you get into an enemy, the more damage it's going to do. So it's sustained damage over a longer period of time. It's also going to be better. But what's really interesting about it is because the rate of fire is so high, you could swap to it, get a whole bunch of crossbolts in the enemy, and then swap to a different weapon that you intend to do a whole bunch of boss damage with. And then the enemy will take more damage from all those crossbolts that you put in the target. So that's a really good use case for this. Another weapon that I find to be particularly good is the Antique Great Bow. This thing has a whole bunch of projectiles, so it'll proc um, multiple hit base things very often, but it also just does a lot of damage in single target. If you had a full single target setup here with just increasing a whole bunch of sniper and crit damage, you could get this thing to hit for multiple millions, and it's probably the best sniper in terms of just getting a really large number out in one shot. Of course, if you do the non-broken version, you'll hit for like 50 million or whatever because it only lasts for one shot, but even, it's not a meme weapon, guys. Like, even outside of that one shot, it still does a lot of damage. A sniper that I think a lot of people like, but I don't really find nearly as good as any of these other ones is the Caraser or Carouser. Don't really know how to say it. I don't find it particularly great. It only comes in fire also, which is an added limitation here. By the way, the Skeet Prod is also only going to come in lightning and the Great Bow can, can come in every single element. Um, it only coming in fire, I think, is a problem, but it's one-shot damage just is not anywhere near as good as the Great Bow, honestly. I mean, the Great Bow is 577 times 7, and this is 2418, and my Great Bow isn't even uh, volatile either. Now I want to talk about a couple niche options that are pretty good. So first off, the Masterwork Hambo is still incredibly strong. It did receive a nerf, however, its single target damage or the damage that it does in just one bullet is very, very good. It particularly pairs very nicely with From the Shadows because From the Shadows is going to guarantee a crit. And whenever it crits, it's going to ricochet, it does a whole bunch of damage. It's a lot of fun to use. I literally always have a Hambo on me because it has the fastest reload speed in the game. So you shoot one shot and it's going to immediately reload. And that's perfect for spell shot because it's going to immediately uh, give you spell weaving stacks. You could also pair this with an enchant where anytime you reload during From the Shadows, it's going to increase the duration. So you could run around with this thing, one-shotting everything, constantly reloading, and it's going to be a whole bunch of fun, and you're going to be in From the Shadows all the time. It got nerfed. I still think it's pretty good. It's not the best bossing weapon, but I find it fun for mobbing, but it's not nearly as good if you're not playing a Stabmancer with From the Shadows. Another niche option is this purple shotgun here, the Kettle Drum. Um, I don't really know how many different ways that this can roll. This is the only one that I've really ever used, to be honest. What's insane about this is that this can roll up to times 25 projectiles. And like I mentioned earlier, if you're using something like Executioner's Blade or Play the Angles or anything that is proc based on damage per hit, this is going to have 21 instances of that damage. So this is going to proc those things incredibly quickly. Really strong weapon overall, does a whole bunch of damage. And honestly, it's nice having a shotgun that's pretty strong. Another niche option is the Live Wire. This thing is not particularly good for bossing, but it's incredibly good for mobbing. Unfortunately, mine didn't have the action skill 20%, but the global 15% damage is basically the same. Um, this thing is pretty much mandatory if you're using any melee build, because if you have it out, anytime you melee, it's going to chain that lightning effect that the gun is actually going to do by default. Honestly, it's really, really good for just mobbing. It has really good AOE capability. Its damage on individual targets isn't particularly high but if you're looking for a lightning gun this is honestly always are going to be a really good pick here it's only going to low in, it's only going to roll in lightning but it's a lot of fun using it and seeing just the chain lightning effect just tear through everything a whole bunch of fun to use another more niche option is not necessarily always niche because of how incredibly strong they are i still think that these are overall the best weapon in the entire game and that is any pixie weapon so there's multiple different ones that you want um, I'm also going to include the Hydra weapon here, but we'll talk about that in a second. So a Fear Not Crossbolt Pistol or a Bloodshot Shotgun that has the text Thrown Weapons Transform into Pixies. These are insanely good. The reason for that is because they are going to scale off of both spell and companion damage. And if you're playing a character like Spellshot, pair that with Graveborn, you can get upwards of 250% additional spell damage increase, as well as getting some really good stuff on your necklace, etc., to increase companion damage. And these things just absolutely tear through everything. I don't have a good setup for this right now, but just throwing them out, they do a ridiculous amount of damage. I've made a lot of builds using these. I still think they're the best weapon. They're likely going to get nerfed because of how predominant they are. But if you're using any spell-based build or any almost any build that scales companion or spell damage, these are the go-to weapon their damage is insane and they also count as spell damage so they're going to proc things like blast gasp etc in the same field is the whatnot these are going to count towards faithful thralls which is why i think they're pretty good when you throw them down it's pretty much going to spawn a hydra these are the best version of any companion spawning thing because they are going to be a multi-headed hydra which has multiple forms of damage and these are also going to spell off a of, scale off of spell and companion damage so they're very strong for that and like i said if you're playing grayborn these are actually going to count towards faithful thralls increasing your damage by a lot so i'd highly recommend 
always having one of these on your person. Now let's get into the bread and butter. So as I'm sure you guys know, cryo weapons are insanely good and the liquid cooling got a heavy nerf. This used to be 800 base damage and now it's all the way down to 280. And a lot of people are probably watching this video and being like, what should I use instead of this? My gun, my build doesn't do nearly as much damage because I don't have the liquid cooling anymore. Well, honestly, the liquid cooling is still insanely good. It's still one of my favorite weapons. A lot of you guys aren't going to be happy to hear that, but this build that I'm using with From the Shadows, having the guaranteed crit, not ever having to reload with this thing, is just insanely good. It's very, very good for bossing and it's still what I use for bossing. It's high fire rate, multiple projectile shots is just incredibly good for proccing things like Executioner's Blade, and it's the main weapon that I use. It's still very strong. It's not nearly as strong as it used to be, but I still think that it is one of the best weapons in the game. There's still a ton of other options that are nearly as good as it, and that is is first off which one that you guys have probably heard a lot about is the automagic.exe this thing i was not super impressed by but i do think that my role is probably not good for it my role is multiple projectiles which is really good you can get like times four my problem with this is that my accuracy is hilariously bad my gun damage overall doesn't seem to be super high but the reload speed is a little bit painful here i'm just going to jot this up to my roll not being all that great i think that it's a really good option but i don't think that it is the best cryo weapon in the game it's probably the worst of these four but it's still really really good for bossing and overall pretty good for mobbing i just hate the fact that i'm reloading all the time another weapon that is probably the single best burst damage weapon in the game is any cryo smg that is going to have the sandhawk pattern so as you can see when i shoot here it's going to have this little pan pattern that's going to shoot like that these are incredibly good for proccing anything such as executioner's blade because they are either four times four projectile or times five projectile and the fire rate is insane if you get really high reload speed on this it can reload incredibly quickly and overall the damage is very very good you want it to either be dala or hyperion these are going to be the ones i believe it's nightshade or spriggan is what they are called these are going to be the ones that are going to do an insane amount of damage they didn't get touched at all in the balancing patches as far as i'm aware and they've always done really good damage and relative to the liquid cooling now they seem even more powerful because of how much it got nerfed another thing that has always been really good and is still one of the best burst damage weapons in the game is the queen's cry what's good about the queen's cry is that its little comet effect is going to scale off of spell damage so if you're playing spell shot it's going to do a bunch of damage but even with a pure gun damage build this thing is incredibly powerful it got a slight nerf but it's like 13 percent not anything to freak out about you can get a time two projectile roll the only thing that i don't like about it is that you can actually kill yourself with the comets and also the reload speed is really bad but if you're playing something like warcaster or you're using a ton of prestidigitation in your class tree uh, the reload speed isn't all that bad overall this weapon is incredibly strong and i've honestly always really loved using it the it just has a few downsides like i mentioned in the same realm of the cryo weapons is the quad bow. I expected this thing to be terrible, honestly. I got a cryo one. I believe it can roll in all in all elements, but I got a cryo one because that's going to be pretty much the main element that is the best in this game. I got one of these with a times four projectile, and I tried it out, and it is actually surprisingly very good. You can see in this boss kill, it does a whole bunch of damage. It's pretty good for mobbing as well. It has a similar problem where you're reloading a lot, but the four the times four projectile. And just the way that it feels overall, I really like. I like that it has the um, effect down here, crossbolts deal increased damage for each crossbolt stuck in the target, because that's going to mean that we're going to do more damage over a longer period of time, since the bolts are just going to stack up really quickly with the multiple projectiles and you shooting multiple shots per shot. Overall, this is a really nice addition. I'm glad that they put it in the game, and I would highly recommend you guys try it out, especially in cryo. That's pretty much it for what I think the absolute best weapons in the game are. Now I just want to give you guys some honorable mentions. I'm kind of just going to speed through these. So the Rogue Imp overall does really good damage. Pretty sure it only rolls in fire, so that's a drawback. Does good damage. Overall, pretty nice. The Imp that it sends out doesn't do a whole bunch of damage, but overall, I like using it. The Perceiver of the Peak is okay at best. It can double dip crit, but its likelihood that it does that is very low. So you can get some really high damage numbers with this, like over 1 million, but it's not going to happen too frequently. The Helion does pretty good damage, but the reload speed is just too much for me to deal with. You reload all the time because the mag size is really small, but overall not that bad. The Gluttony of the Carver is really fun when using a uh, Dark Magic build. Throw it out and it just does a bunch of damage, but you are going to have the problem of health gating yourself consistently. And then you have the Thunder Anima. This is a new weapon. I don't think that it's good for bossing, but it has some pretty good AoE clear. Puggly just made a build with it that I think is particularly fun. And seeing this ricochet and just do a whole bunch of lightning damage is a lot of fun. So if you're using a lightning build, this is certainly something to look out for. The Ruby Spite I've always found to be pretty good. It just is a little bit lackluster and takes a second to build up because you need to get a kill for it to then have the auto tracking and 
you know, doing a whole bunch of damage potential, but it's a lot of fun to use. If you're using a dark magic build, highly recommend looking into it. Using a torque based build, uh, I believe Jolt Suit has a really good one, and I got this weapon from that save. Uh, these can be pretty good. As you can see, it has a whole bunch of projectiles that'll proc things like play the angles a ton. I haven't really used it all that much, but I know that it can be pretty strong in the right setup. People like the White Rider. I found the damage to be a little bit lackluster, but feel free to use that if you want a poison damage weapon. Unfortunately, I don't have it on me, but the Rain of Arrow shotgun, which I showed in my previous gun video, is still really good. It just has an ammo problem. Problem. It's good for bossing, but it's kind of annoying because you can kill yourself with it and it has ammo problems. Anyways, that's pretty much going to do it for me. If you guys enjoyed the video, please encourage to drop a like, subscribe for videos similar to this one. Hopefully you found it helpful. If there's any guns that I didn't mention, feel free to leave it down in the comments. I tried to go over everything that I find to be pretty strong, but I didn't want to make the video a million minutes long. Hopefully you guys enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. More builds in the future and yeah, see you guys later.